ranking your calculus mistakes, from cringe to sigma, 100, today, we're diving headfirst into the mathematical abyss and ranking the worst calculus mistakes you guys, and yeah, let's be honest, me too, have made. Whether you're trying to pull off the ultimate sigma riz move of acing your AP test or just out here surviving derivatives, these mistakes are what separate the giga chads of calculus from the beta level floppers. So, buckle up, grab your graphing calculator, or, if you're really about that alpha life, your CAS enabled one, and let's find out if you've got the Einstein tier game to integrate your way to victory, or if you're straight up Ling the alpha test like it's a 5 point question on the final. Alright, in my last video we did the algebra mistakes tier list, now it's time for the calculus mistakes. So same series as before, seriously, careless, it happens, and cringe. Our first mistake goes to differentiating a constant. Maybe this happens the first time you're getting familiar with derivatives, but let's see an example of this error. Let's take ddx of... Did we see an x here? No, this is a constant, so the derivative is 0. This would go into cringe tier, as you should know by now that constants have no rate of change. This one is also a pretty silly mistake and cringe-worthy if you do it on an exam. What could have been free points has become overcomplicated by applying derivative rules when you could just write zero and move on. The next one is a set of really common error when doing integrals. They are not writing the differential dx and forgetting the plus c. These are just plain careless. First you have to include a differential always when integrating. It's a lot like not wearing a seatbelt while driving. You definitely can do it, it's just not safe. Second, always remember adding the concept of integration for indefinite integrals. When you take an antiderivative, it yields a family of functions. For example, if we were to integrate or find an antiderivative of x, think of the integrand x as the output after differentiating some mystery function. We see that antiderivative is x squared over 2, but there could be a constant that may shift it up or down. That is why we need the plus c. Next up, this one's a really bad one. That is thinking you could distribute integrals. The integral of a product it is not the product of the integrals, nor sum of integrals. This one has to go to serious tier because it violates the rules of calculus. When I worked as a calc tutor in college, I once saw a fellow tutor, quote unquote, demonstrating this property. It yielded nothing but nonsense. The only time this is sort of true is when pulling out a constant multiple, or if you have an integral of a sum, then it becomes the sum of integrals. So don't try to spread integrals across like sums, like they have some kind of distributive property. This is just wrong. Next we have forgetting the chain rule. When you forget the chain rule, your derivative is going to be wrong. This would have to go into the seriously tier. Everything is differentiable. Thinking that everything is differentiable is our next mistake. Now this may happen when you've only been exposed to differentiating continuous functions, but there are some functions for which it is not differentiable at a point. Take absolute value of x as an example. If we were to graph the absolute value of x, we get this, and it has a sharp turn, which is not differentiable. If we take the derivative of this and graph it, we get a function that looks like this. Taking the limit as it approaches from both sides also shows that it's not differentiable at the point zero. I'll be gentle and put this in the it happens tier, simply because you're not exposed to many of these non-differentiable functions in a regular calculus class. Next up, we have something I like to call blind L'Hopital. Now this one just feels like you want to take the easy route. You learn this tool and think to yourself, I can solve all limits like this. You differentiate your numerator and denominator and find a limit. Simple, right? No. We need to remember the conditions for L'Hopital's rule. First, the limit has to be in an indeterminate form such as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Next, the numerator and denominator functions have to be differentiable at c. The derivative of the denominator is non-zero. Lastly, the limit of f prime over g prime exists. When all these conditions are met, we can then apply L'Hopital's rule. Blind L'Hopital would have to go into seriously tier. Integrate all the things. Look, you've probably done numerous textbook exercises in integration, and if you're in Calc 2, you learn some fancy new techniques, such as integration by parts or a trig sub. So you assume you can integrate all functions because you know the integration techniques. But that is not enough. There are so many things we cannot integrate with our standard techniques. Let's look at some. Integral of 1 over x squared plus 1. This we can do. If we change the power, no. 
Integral e to the minus x? Yes. Integral x e to the minus x squared? Yes. Integral e to the minus x squared? Unfortunately, no. Integral sine x over x? Integral sine x squared? Integral log sine x. You cannot use your calc two techniques on these. I would put this in a cringe tier because you can't integrate everything. It's not as straightforward as taking derivatives with a bunch of rules. This comic by XKCD illustrates the point. Extra cringe points if you add a plus c to an integral that was integrated wrong. Next up we have a cursed one. Continuous implies differentiable. This one was just wrong. This would have to go into seriously tier. Sure, if a function is differentiable, it is continuous. But if you throw the arrow in the other direction, it doesn't hold. A function can be continuous but not differentiable. Think of the graph of absolute value of x. Yes, it is continuous, but it's not differentiable at the point zero. Next, we have taking the algebraic scenic route, or doing algebra in a long, time-consuming way, like expanding polynomials when you don't have to. It happens. Sometimes you get caught up in simplifying your expressions before realizing you've taken a much longer and more complicated path than necessary. But hey, it happens to the best of us. Next, we have taking the wrong product and quotient rule for the derivative. This would have to go into seriously tier. Let me explain why through the proof. Let's do the proof of the product rule. First, remember the limit definition of the derivative. Now if we apply the limit definition of derivative, f of x, g of x, we get this difference question. We're going to do a quick trick here where we subtract and add f of x plus h times g of x. Huh? And when we factor, we get the following. No device is ready to pale. Applying our limit rules, we get the following. We break the limit up as follows. To get our final result, which is the product rule f oh g prime plus g f prime that concludes our proof this is a certified hood classic next we have forgetting the minus sign now this one happens all the time so we have to go to it happens tier this is particularly true when you're handling sine and cosine when you take the derivative of sine you get cosine and when you take the derivative of cosine you get negative sine which is something we just have to remember implicit differentiation now, implicit differentiation is weird when you first learn it. Prior to it, you've seen functions in the form of y equals something or f of x equals something. Things become different when we have an implicit function of x's and y's thrown into one equation. However, when we perform implicit differentiation, we really need to pay attention to what variable we're differentiating with respect to. Usually that's x, so when you see a y, we get dy dx. In addition, when we do our algebra to solve for dy dx, we might mess up. Overall, I would put this in a care list here, as you really have to pay attention to our calculus. Next, we have overcomplicating an integral. Now, this is something that happens a lot when you're first learning it. There are just so many integration techniques that we have to know, and knowing which one to use is half the battle. The tricky parts here include using algebra to clean it up or change it to a more appropriate form. Overall, I would have to put this in it happens tier. I believe integration is a log at art, just like a master artist knows which paintbrush to use, a master integrator would know which integration technique to use. In a similar fashion, I would put the wrong series convergence test in it happens tier, just because there's so many tests you need to know. These tests include the geometric series test, comparison test, alternating series test, integral test, ratio and root test, as well as the p-series. We have these at our disposal, but we didn't know when to apply them. This can only be done through practice, and it becomes a lot like an art. Speaking of series convergence tests, our next offender is not checking the interval of convergence for a power series. When we are working with this series, we need to make sure where it converges. But not only that, we have to test the endpoints to see if there's convergence at the boundaries. This is why we study series convergence tests, so after plugging in these endpoints, we can quickly determine convergence simply by inspection. Careless tier simply because this is part of the procedure. So that wraps up my calculus mistakes tier list. Hopefully this helps you avoid these common pitfalls and allows you to move forward in your calculus journey. Let me know if I missed any mistakes in the comments below, and maybe I can do a part two for more calculus mistakes, including mistakes from multivariable calculus. See you next time.
sign of a pleasant beta sign of a cousin beta cousin never a sign beta cousin never a pleasant beta cousin never a cousin beta sign of a sign beta time never a person beta time never a ten beta or a one my ten never a ten beta sign of a minor beta sign of a cousin beta cousin never a sign beta cousin never a my beta cousin never a cousin beta sign never a sign beta tension never a minor beta tension never a tension beta or one plus tension never a tension beta as you come across the right triangle you feel easy to soothe but our triangle gonna make you confused don't worry about it do all we mean to do as long as you master Sign, sign, law.